We're very, very happy to be presenting to you Birth Story, Ina Mae Gaskin and the Farm Midwives, directed by Mary Wickmore and Sarah Lamb. <laughs> you are in for a treat. Uh, this is a very, very specific crowd. We've, we're screening 116 films, but this is, a, this is one of the most energized audiences that I've seen, and also in a very attractive audience. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Sarah Wigmore and, uh, sorry, to Mary Wigmore and Sarah Lamb. This is also Margo, who was born during production. Um, thank you so much to Doc NYC for supporting our film, and it's so exciting to be back in New York. We both used to live here, so it's kind of a dream come true to show our film here. Please welcome back to the stage Sarah Lamb, Mary Wigmore, and give a very warm welcome to Ina Mae Gaskin. Hello. So, wow. Um, wow. I, there haven't been that many standing ovations here at the festival. We filmed two births, and we want to recognize Heather Chan, who is here, who is in the very first scene of the film. Ah. <clears throat> and she, she was gracious enough to allow us to be at, her, at the birth of her third child. Um, and and it, was, it was a pretty incredible, I mean, for us, we had only been at our own births. So to have the privilege to be at um, you know, two other women's births, was, it was sort of mind blowing. Ina May had sort of prepared us by, by talking about the energy in the room. She talks about that in the film, and, and for us, it was completely true, so. It was, we were felt so lucky to be there. And um, it was just, it was kind of scary filming it because it, I was shaking. Like I was just, it was just so incredible to be there. And she was so calm and uh, literally didn't know when the baby was coming out because she was just so calm and so beautiful. And her mother was there coaching her. Her mother was a labor delivery nurse for many years. And Ina Mae was one of her mother's heroes. So it was like this incredible circle of people um, that were just so supportive of Heather. And she and it was just so beautiful and calm and sweet. And after the baby was born, she got in her bed. And her mom brought her chicken soup. And she ate chicken soup. And she had her four-year-old <laughs> next to her and the baby right there. And it was, I just had never seen anything like it. it I was awestruck. And I think we were both just silenced, you know. There was nothing you could say. and. We felt so um, lucky to to be there, be observers of this. So thank you, Heather, for letting us have that experience. <laughs> and uh, there was just something about in you know Sarah's eyes, and that she'd already had a baby herself. Well, I mean, I mean, Mary and I went to the farm for a weekend, and we thought, okay, we don't, we don't know how we're going to tell the story. We don't know what the story is going to be. And we went, and we thought, okay, we'll sit down with a long interview with Ina Mae. And, and it went really well. Mm. I mean, yeah. we could say <laughs> it went well. Um, and then I remember, Ina Mae, you said uh, that you felt really good because Mary and I were both mothers. I felt that, and, and also you'd done something. You'd made a film before. That was big. <laughs> yeah, she finished it. You see, yeah, that matters. This is great because Mary and I both lived in Brooklyn. Our friend Carla, who's here tonight, gave us the book, gave me the book when I was pregnant, and and said, you know, this is this is this is the book that I think everyone should read. This spiritual midwifery. Anime has written several other books, as you can tell from the film. And then the same thing happened when Mary got pregnant. I gave the book to her, which I think happens a lot. I mean, probably there are people here tonight. If somebody gave you a copy of Spiritual Midwifery raise your hand. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible, right? It's a group of stories that that people pass from one hand to another and it has that like incredible um, rootsy connection to, to all women and that's how it began for us. So Carla gave it to me, I gave it to Mary and then we met, um, we were lucky enough to meet Ina Mae in LA and, and mm -hmm. said, where's the movie about you? Why, why hasn't it been done? And, mm -hmm. and, and I had a young son at the time and, and I said, Mary, you'll never believe I met Ina Mae, and you know, there's not a movie about her. And, I just, and Mary said, well, let's go make it. Hmm. Well, I think that most of the babies that we attend now are, well, let's say, maybe a third that we're doing now, maybe almost a half are Amish, so we go to them because, yeah, you don't travel to other people when it's horse and buggy. 
right? right. <laughs> but uh, most of the others are traveling to us. You know, community is not so big as it was in the 70s when we were, you know, videoing most of that archival footage that you saw. And so people can fr come from, you know, uh, Egypt, uh, Turkey, and then they come <laughs> in Indonesia. I mean, I mean, yeah, but New York, yeah, Chicago, whatever. Um, and uh, usually it's because they can't find the kind of birth they want where they live. I think that anybody that could get the birth they wanted in Alabama would be happy to be stay there, you see. But we have to get midwifery legal there. If you're a nurse midwife, um, you are technically legal, but just try and find a hospital that will hire you. I teach a lot of, um, of the uh, nursing instructors from the technical colleges bring their students and we can feel the change that's taking place, you know, as that C-section rate goes higher and higher and higher, and people really start to think, that can't be right, yeah. So we're having, you know, people are having a, a rethink. There are some countries where the C-section rate is, you, it's- Brazil? Not, yeah, Brazil. Well, China right. has probably the highest overall. It's, it's over 50% now. And when you get it that high, it's really hard to turn it round. Because if you, uh, you know, if your doctors, your, your incoming medical students, your nursing students, your midwifery students have never seen a birth that doesn't have all this medical intervention, they're really, um, they feel that energy and they get frightened. They really want to get a machine. They want to get the anesthesiologist in there right away and get the epidural. Um, and, you know, as you see, we, we kind of save the epidural for those times when we need a C-section, which is, you know, less than 3%. And, um, and s the people who get persecuted in this country are not just the midwives who dare to do breech birth, and commonly we have to do it at home because it's kind of not allowed in many, many hospitals, and we have to keep it alive because if we don't, women are going to have their breech babies all by themselves with no midwife there. So I was taught how to do this, uh, but doctors today too often aren't taught anymore and given that three to four percent of babies are going to come out with the bottom first or the one or two feet first um it that's what i referred to when i thought i can't stand it that the doctors today aren't taught what they used to be required to learn now those who dare to do it get persecuted sometimes by medical boards and um they'll try to take away that doctor's practice or at <coughs> least the obstetrical part of it and so that's a real problem. Um, and we've also had to think a lot about, you know, all of our friends, uh, many of our friends say, we, I really wanted a natural birth, or I really hope I have a natural birth. And, and it, you know, it can be in the woman that she wants that, but it has to be also in the care provider that the care provider understands how to facilitate that. And so it's not just a sort of cultural issue of what's happening with women, it's very much an issue of what's happening in the training of the people, the care, caregivers across the board, midwives and OBs, understanding what physiologically, you know, normal birth is in an uninterrupted way and being able to support it. Because you see all these people who go through their training and they just don't get to see it. And so, of course, it makes sense. If you don't see it, how can you support it and how can you facilitate it? So, And, and our hope for the film was that it would be useful for families and doulas and doctors and midwives and, you know, support collaboration between all of these people. Mm. And, you know, that's a big hope for us for this film. We have these funny habits that are really the product of at least half a century of midwives having no say about birth. And actually, the midwives of 100 years ago knew a lot more than people give them credit for. Ladies, thank, thank you, Ida May. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.